Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. If you're not watching this on the new Watchbox app, you're doing it all wrong. New features available on the Apple App Store or Google Play. You'll see Watchbox Studios content one week early, exclusive on the app. Plus, you can read editorial content from our own Jack Foster and your favorite third party watch journals, magazines, and blogs. Also, shop our inventory, browse 3,000 pre owned and vintage luxury watches while also storing your collection, including details of condition, box, and papers. Finally, stay in touch with me, my team, and our entire family of Watchbox client advisors around the world. I'm Tim, and I'll see you on the app. Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. The great pleasure of these collector conversations is that no two collections and no two collectors are alike. It's an even greater pleasure when the man is one after my own heart. He's a professional coach. He's an amateur cook. He's a watch and a car guy. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. Really appreciate being here. Now, the fun thing about your collection is it sort of predates your memory because you told me you can't remember a time when you didn't wear a watch. I don't. Um, we have picture and photographic evidence of me, like we're talking like six, five, four. Always had something on. Like, I think it started when playing with some uh, stopwatches. My father had some stopwatches. Think like early 70s. I don't even know what the brand was, but you would turn it and you would feel how it would wind and in the mechanical field. I was like, I want one of these. And then seeing like racing movies, Steve McQueen and Le Mans, I was like, I like that. So I always, I always wanted, I always had something. Always had something. Didn't matter as far back. I always remember wearing something. I definitely understand that notion of like the cool guy wearing a watch. It's aged a lot better than the Hollywood cool guy smoking a cigarette. So I, I'm, I approve. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the fun stuff because you started early, and you know, like me, I started with Armatron Digitals in the '90s. Tell me about the oldest watch in the collection because it's very much in that vein. The oldest watch I have. Uh, that's with mine. We have some, you know, a couple family pieces, but I actually have one of the Iron Man, the, the, the Timex that we had pre Indiglo. So I had always wanted, you know, I always wanted to wear a watch, but that was the first one I remember going, I have to have that. Like this is, I need to have that in my collection. It's cool. I, I guess the marketing around it worked. And so I remember, I think it was Christmas and this is 1986, somewhere around that. And I remember that was the, that was the big present that year. It's like, here's this watch. And, and to this day, I still have it and I, I keep it, you know, I have it in a case where I can see it. And, you know, it's, it's really just a good reminder of like where a collecting journey can start and where it can kind of evolve from then. And it's still fun. And it resurfaced recently, I understand. Yes, it did. Um, being able to, you know, it, it was in a box, like, like everything, the box of lead trinkets that you move around, found it in a box. It was like, I still have this. This is awesome. And, and just to be able to, to see it and then kind of as a reference point of like, how did I think about watches then? And like, where did I want to go? And what was next? You know, it was just, it's really, it's really fun to be able to look and have that kind of perspective. Now, I want to jump back and then jump forward because, you know, you're originally from the D.C. area, but you have musical memories from around Philly. Tell me about your career in music and then we'll jump to the watch that sort of leaps out of that experience. Uh, well, so, um, Part of music's a big part of my life, and I started playing trumpet at a young age. And being able to to have the memories of not just the music you make, but the people that you're with—that's what makes it special. And there's a group that I'm very proud to be a part of, and they're called the Crossmen, the Crossmen Drum and Bugle Corps. That have significant roots here in the Philadelphia area. Where the the group has now since moved to Texas, but the the core folks—I've got friends right down the street right now that are probably going to be upset that I didn't call uh, to visit. But our our logo looked like the Iron Cross. And our, our colors of when I was there actually were black and red. And so anything that is black and red with a cross always was special to me. So when that came out, I was like, this is like the perfect watch. When I showed it to my wife, she was like, oh, wow, that's a Crossman watch right there. I showed it to like my partner that I, that I, that I played with. He was like, that is literally the perfect watch, like for that group. So, like when I when I see that that watch, I, think I have a lot of good memories of other friends. But that's what really pops out to me. It's interesting because it's it's om you don't really have like a class ring for a musical group. But this is almost that. And you mentioned that there are other Crossman watches beside the Vacheron that people interpret as appropriate to the group. Yeah, a few. Like some people, I knew a couple people who uh, really like these like 
black and red G-Shocks came out. I've heard of a couple folks that are like, oh, some of the older Seikos. But like for me, when I see that, I see the logo, you know, obviously hundreds of years of, of watchmaking and excellence and, you know, just the, the special nature of it, which was key. But, but I wear that and I, I think of that group fondly when I see it. And initially, they didn't have the black dial that you wanted. No, no. I saw my very good friend, wonderful friend Paul, showed me a silver dial dual time. And I was like, I remember that was one of the first like north of $20,000. Like in my head, it was like I had that price point of like Daytona's like early teen, like this is years ago. So like eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. So I was like, hi, here's a significantly more expensive watch. I was like, I didn't want to touch it. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't even feel good handling it. And then I was looking, I was like, this is beautiful. And we looked at the class and I was like, everything about this is perfect. I really wish they made a black dial. And I'd seen the blue dial. And I was like, oh, it looks black when you see it, but it's not black. And so when um, I got wind that they were going to make a black dial, I was like, oh, I have to have that. And luckily was able to get one of the first ones around. And and I'm very grateful. I'm, I love to be a part of that brand. They've been great to deal with. They've always taken care of me. And uh, that's a real special watch to me. I really enjoy it. And I love that story because your watch has become part of the furniture. You really do wear them. Absolutely. So that black dial came out in 2019. The, the dual time for this model, the third generation, came out in 2017. They did sort of string out a few years till that really cool model became available. Mm -hmm. But your experience with high-end watches, uh, you know, buying yourself something really nice, it, it pretty much started with this uh, Carrera. Tell me about how this Tag Heuer Carrera fit into the scheme. Oh, that that is, uh, when I look at that, I actually think of my wife. Um, my wife, Christine, and I have, have built a business together. We're, we're partners in crime. We do everything together. And when we had taken a trip uh, to Vegas, this is for some, some different activities and video games, actually, when I was in town, I was like, I'd always wanted, I was a huge Hoyer fan. Like seeing the videos and, you know, the Monaco from Le Mans really caught my eye. And so I always like, Hoyer, Hoyer, Hoyer. And then it was Tag, and we would just say Tag. And me and my friends who like cars would say, someday we're going to own a Tag. Someday I want a Tag. And I remember my good friend Mike, someday I want a Tag. He still says that. And I want to buy him one. Just buy it, man. When we went, I was like, I want a Carrera. I want a chronograph. I want a Carrera. I want a black dial Carrera. And we went into a we went into a shop out there. And um, and where was this? This is in Vegas. This is in Las Vegas. Uh, at the time, it was called Cadoro. This I, they've since rebranded, uh, but they were very nice to me. And it was like, here it is. And I, it was hard for me to get my head around. I'm about to spend a lot of money on a watch. And and up until that point, you know, when you figure. G-Shocks, and you know, here, here's the G-Shock I'm going to wear this year. Before like Iron Man, Iron Man, some the strap will break, or you know, spring, and I'll go get another one. But it's like this is something I'm going to keep for a while. This is substantial. It's a bracelet watch. This is something, and and I remember wearing it, and it, it felt different. It was like, oh wow, this is like a I'm wearing a grown up's. I'm, I'm, I'm this is a grown up watch. It's like the first grown up watch, and it kind of felt. Almost like, oh, not like I've arrived or anything, like a big accomplishment, but it's like, oh, we're kind of like moving, moving it forward in my just overall perception of watches. And so I, I wore that a lot. It's, it's had the bezel replaced twice. Um, it's been knocked off our counter multiple times by our wonderful cats. Um, yeah, but, but I still have it in the collection. I still wear it. And my wife has a matching Carrera with diamonds and we wear it out together at times. Yeah, there's a lot of dimensions to you. You've got the band, Cats, Carreras, Vacheron. Yeah. But you got to remind me what you were doing in Las Vegas, because that's a story in and of itself <laughs> when you bought this watch. So um, a couple of folks, uh, I came together with a really special group of people uh, earlier in my career, because who doesn't like video games? Uh, and so I always love playing stuff at home. You know, you have Pong and television, ColecoVision, fun stuff. But arcades were really where I enjoyed it. And so when a genre of games came out called fighting games, that was really appealing to me because you basically put your quarter up and if you would win, you got to stay. And so people would get together and they'd say, all right, well, try to beat me. And if I was better, then I could stay on and the next person had to pay for the game. And I could, if you're good, you got to keep playing. And we used to joke about, oh, you go to the pizza parlor and like, who's the best in the pizza parlor? Oh, who's the best in the 7-Eleven? And over the years, it was like, what if all the pizza parlors and all the 7-Elevens came together and we figured out who was the best? And so an entire tournament series was born. Uh, people call it eSports now, you'll see stuff. But around fighting games, I'm so honored to be a part of the group that helps to bring the largest event of its type in the world uh, every year in Vegas called Evo. 
And so that was at an earlier Evo. I ended up buying that. And, um, there's a video of me doing some announcing work and it's, I'm wearing like a fresh, freshly, fresh, freshly fitted Carrera with a microphone up and like getting the, getting the, getting the, <laughs> getting the crowd all excited. Um, uh, but yeah, so every, every event we do, we've been doing this for well over 20 years now. And these are my closest friends. And like, I actually, one of them, I helped buy, helped steer them to a Panerai last year. So they're not, they're not quite wanting to buy a bunch of watches, but they're kind of in the pool now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I remember George R. R. Martin said he used to organize chess tournaments. This is cooler. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to opine that's a lot cooler. <laughs> Shout out to the FGC. So the Carrera originally came to mind because you love cars and it has motorsports associations. And we've got this remarkable hardware on the table. I think you and I, you know, we're very similar in age. You're a younger Gen X. I'm an older millennial. We grew up with the American, Japanese and German cars of the 80s and 90s. Um, your first car was a bit earlier than that, and that's why this is here. How, t first, tell me what that is. <laughs> so that's, um, I found this model. This is, uh, I believe the company is Candy Labs. They, they came up with these cool retro vintage type pieces, like, like expensive toys that you could use. And the reason I bought that is my father, <laughs> I love my dad. Uh, my parents were awesome, and we had this station wagon that they bought when I was very young. And it was, uh, for those folks who are watching, uh, a Dodge Aspen Valari station wagon. And it was tan with wood siding, white wall tires. And it had the, uh, the 225 slant six, two barrel carb, uh, three speed. And it went way too fast when I owned it. But it was the first car that I had. And I loved it. I would go out and, you know, wash it and change the tires and all. And, and it was, you know, it's your first car. Yeah. And, and it's like, there's special, like the seat, the seat was busted, sat really low. I had a whole bunch of subwoofers in the trunk and it was, I still have fond memories of that car. You, you love your first car like Always. you love your first watch. Even if your first watch was G-Shock, Timex, Iron yep. Man. Sometimes even when it's a piece of scrap, you keep that watch <laughs> around. I keep pieces of my old Jeep XJ Cherokee. That was my uh, first car. I still have the spare wheel and storage back at my parents' house, so I know exactly how you feel. I don't have the rest of the truck, though. But, I mean, the, the real hardware, like the aspirational <laughs> hardware when we were younger, it was like your Mark IV GTI or this A80 Supra. Those are not just models. You've owned the real thing. Yes. Um, these all uh, have been special parts of the journey. And the reason I wanted to bring these is that I, I think of uh, a gift that my, my parents gave me. My father gave me some pictures, and I couldn't find the original one. Uh, but basically what he had done is he had a picture of me posing with the wagon when I was like, young, like a teenager. And he had a picture of me, and he put yesterday underneath it. And it was like, this is where you were. And so that it was good to think of it that way of like, I'm a big fan of always being a little bit uh, reflective and, you know, perspective is a really big thing and being like, always remember where you're from. And a lot of my mentors in business used to say that, remember where you're from, like, never forget where you're from. It's like, okay. And so that picture of me with that car was yesterday, but then he had a picture that said today. And that was the, the GTI. Cause like right when I was entering the workforce, I was like, I want a brand new, like Mark four GTI. I was like six cylinder manual transmission. Like, let's go. Like it's, premium car and I, I couldn't believe I spent that much on it from a percentage of my paycheck at the time but it was like he had a picture of me posing with that and he put today but then he also had tomorrow and someday with the other cars like you take a picture of me with a Supra and he was like this is what's coming it's on your short range radar and then someday was the aspirational and um, it's always it's interesting looking at them here in this aspect because like where you are where you almost are where you're going where you someday might get so many people think about that from like a collector's journey. And, and um, I'm fortunate enough to have experienced all of these. Uh, I'd love to bring my Mark IV Supra back home at some point. I did end up selling it uh, because I had promised the other half. I said, I'll, I'll move this to be a part of it. But that GT um, has been very special to me. It's, it's wonderful. The, the community around that has been uh, otherworldly. Uh, I look at it and I smile because, you know, people like, you know, they say Grail Watch, you know, Grail Watch should be the end. And like, if I could, if they said reset, buy anything else, I'd buy another one of those. I love it. Monumental. And how many, one, you've been collecting 118 scale for 35, 40 years? <sighs> plus. Yeah, plus. Yeah, long as I've, my first 118 scale cars, probably 83, 82, around then is when I first started getting them. And then I get about two or three every year. And so, um, luckily, <laughs> we've got the space in the display cases and shelves to put stuff out. Well, I said he's a man after my own heart, so I'm going to put this Ford GT of his over by my Corvette off to my left so you can see uh, we're very much of one mind on that. 
Fun stuff alongside the watches. It's kind of the watches and wheels. That's my entire world. So uh, take me on a tour now. I think this is probably the most interesting because this is not watches and wheels. This Zeno Zenith Stratos flyback is actually watches and wings or something approaching wings. Yeah, I'll take the space. So the space jump. When uh, It's funny that mentioning the Stratos, like that's actually one of the first times I had seen Zenith as a brand. And I was like, what's that? Because, you know, you see the livery and you look it up because that's what you do. Um, I always thought, you know, I like to have, here is my Zenith, or here is my Grand Seiko. Like, I like one of, like people like in a car collection be like, I'm gonna go take the Chevy out. We all know what the Chevy's gonna be. Um, but when it came to this one, when I saw the Space Jump, I was like, hey, that's cool. And they were like, well, here's the watch user. And I was like, oh, that's extra cool. And then at that point in time, I was like, I, I wasn't thinking about buying that. And finding that one, that specific one, that was a, four to five year hunt for me to find that. Um, it, I found it online and it was listed, there was no English on a site that had it posted up and I think it was mismarked. And to find new old stock on bracelet, I was like, gotta have that. And um, I didn't need the one tenth of a second uh, cause I was like, I want, I want the 60 minute counter and have the turnable bezel. And so to find that, and I found a Zenith, um, OEM rubber strap and deployment factory sealed so I can swap on and have the same factory look. I, I love that watch. When did you buy this watch? A year or two ago, okay. just recently. Because like you said, it, it is tough to find a watch like this that's still fresh these days because the Felix Baumgartner, the daredevil, not the watchmaker, jumped basically out of a balloon on the edge of space in a spacesuit and he broke the speed of sound in a free fall. So that happened in 2012. This came out in 2013. I guess it was just destiny. This went unsold until you found it. I, it was it was pure luck. Like I got so lucky to find that, and I'm so happy to have that. When it comes to like Zenith, and you know, people you know get really romantic about the story around the El Primero, and oh, in the in the warehouse, and there's so many cool pieces they have. That's the one for me. And, and to have the lugs pull straight down, to have the, the click is really good. The fact that it could, you know, pass, you know, the flyback for work, I do a lot of, uh, uh, short activities and discussions with my students. And to be able to have that fly, I always wanted a flyback. And so to, to check, cross off so many boxes and to be such a cool, and I, I've never seen someone wear that. And like that, that's a cool, I love that watch so much. My friends, they're like, do you got that cool Zeta? I'm like, yeah, man, I love that thing. Lots of fun, and I guess, you know, a great watch, it, well, it helps to make a watch great if it has a great story behind it. Sometimes it's things a daredevil does. Sometimes it's things that, you know, a race car driver would do with the Carrera. And sometimes it's a friendly guy you just keep in high regard. So tell me a little bit about Brew and the Metric Retro, because this is a really cool watch from a cool dude. I, I think that that watch is cool. And if you haven't checked out Brew, for those of you out there, People talk in the business like, oh, this is an interesting company, or oh, they're doing really cool things. And then you hear, you know what? That's a good guy, or that's a good girl. Those are good people. And it's like, again, thanks for, thanks for having me on, Tim. I mean, we, we share sure. so many interests, but also what I've always found amazing is that being so authentic and being so approachable makes you so special, and that's awesome. So thanks for having me on for this. But the gentleman who does these from Brew, Jonathan is, just the nicest guy. Uh, he's one of my first calls when I come to New York. I'm like, hey, I'm coming up. Can we get together? He shares a passion for autos. He shares a passion for watches. I d I've rarely seen him without a smile. Um, he, he answers every question everyone ever asks. Uh, it's a cool brand. It's an accessible brand. It's, an, it's a little bit aspirational for some folks. And to have a mixture of, here's the thought that went into the design element, the crossover with the coffee is super cool. Uh, to, to have a, here's our interesting, playful take on 8-bit video games. It's like, okay, that's cool. Here, here's our take on a salmon dial. That's cool. When, when the metric came out, I was like, okay, that's the case size I like. It, it's, it fits me really, really good. But I was like, I was hoping the color scheme would be a little different. He had a white dial, like with white and blue. I was like, it's cool. I don't know when I'd wear it. And then when that one dropped, I was like, Please let me know. And just like anything happened, kind of like when you call Ticketmaster for, for tickets, I missed the window for the first round. I was heartbroken. And I was like, I was in a meeting and I wrote him. I was like, Jonathan, you killed me. He's like, hang on. Like, I'll tell you when the next, it's, it's, I will get, I will get you this. It's not a problem. You, you, you'll get it. And, uh, for a 
luckily it worked out. I got it. I wear that thing proudly. Um, I, it's a great conversation piece. It, the colors are just great. I feel comfortable wearing it in so many situations. And, um, people ask me like, what's that? And I get to say, here's this company, but also let me tell you about my friend who's literally someone I love to have a meal with. I love to talk cars with. And it's just good to connect. That's like the watch is the gateway, but the person, that's what really brings it all special for me. And that really is incredible because it shows that, you know, machines are great, but it's the men and machine in tandem and great women as well uh, that really make the experience. You're not just accumulating. Everything has a memory tied to it. It also shows that with cars and with watches, it's a non-linear kind of journey because you would think, well, you start with Iron Man, you move up to Tag Heuer, then you get a Rolex, then you buy a Vacheron, and then you're done. But you had high horology before you had Brew, and you had the Ford GT while you're talking about reacquiring the Mark IV GTI. So the heart wants what the heart wants, and it's not always just a linear progression. That's correct. It, it jumps around, and I think that... Uh just kind of being able to think about, okay, I enjoy watches, and you can enjoy watches across the spectrum and not just in one direction. I mean, something comes out, it's like, okay, that's cool. Like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, I, I got a chance to try on the um, the Pelagos 39, and I'm like, this is pretty cool, and I can see why people really are excited about it. But, like, Black Bay 58, so I, I, I've recommended that watch to so many people. Like, I'm thinking about getting into things. I don't really know what brand to go with this. And I'm like, S let's use this as a jump off point. Start here. And they try it on. And so many times they're like, oh, this is exactly what I was looking for. And I'm like, yeah, this is a pretty cool watch. And, you know, that might be their, the only watch they buy. And that's fine. You know, it's totally fine. It's like, here's my watch. And to be able to say, here's my Watch collection. I mean, I, I don't really like sit and look at all of them together. It's kind of interesting to me to just see them there because I, I wear two to three watches a day. Like I'll wear, I'll wake up and I'll have something on. I'll throw the brew on and like doing stuff around the house. And then if I'm getting on camera, I'll, I'll maybe put uh, the Grand Seiko on and I'll wear that like because I'm I'm timing things. And then it's like the week. And then it's like okay, it's evening. We're gonna do this. Maybe I'll throw the Moser on and just kind of kind of relax and. It's just fun to be able to change it up depending on the mood and the setting. And it is very cool that you've got two legs of the Holy Trinity right here. You've got independence with Moser. And yet, at the same time, you know, we were talking about how you just connect with a watch and it's not necessarily moving up a tree of complexity or cost. You've got a full metal G-Shock here. Anniversary edition. Oh, yeah. Now, you're child of the 80s, so this must be right up your alley. Oh, it absolutely right up my alley. When that dropped, because it's 35, I saw that and that was a, it was, it was throwing it back to that Iron Man. It was like, I've got to have that. And that was super annoying to try to find because I'd call around to a G-Shock place. And I'm like, hi, do you have, and they're like, huh? And like, like, look, man, I just changed, changed batteries. I don't know what you're talking about. And I would visit local places. And I'm like, I'd show them the picture. I'd show them, re I go, the reference is this. They're like, what's a reference number? So I'm like, it's like trying to find a special vacuum in Bed Bath and Beyond. It wasn't going to work. And, um, a good friend of mine and I, really wanted to get those and there's a funny part of this story that was sad with a happy ending because we ended up finding them we, we found them online uh jared <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> he, gallery he of, went to jared he went to jared the gallery of jewelry and i called around they said we have some on our special order website if you drive to charlottesville virginia we can get them to you and then they had me go and you could just purchase them and so i called my my good friend i was like we need to buy these right now it was like oh i'm making dinner i go no 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 Let's buy it now. Swipe the card, and we got, I think there are only two. And then I, I wear it a lot, I scratch it up, I've got a lot of great stories. He and I, it's kind of like our, our hey, this is some, a watch we bought together. But that watch meant missing for the better part of a year and a half, and I was despondent. I tore my entire house, like down to the, we emptied rooms looking for it. I had been, I was washing cars and I said, I don't want to scratch anything up. And I took it off and I remember putting it in my garage. And the last time I saw it was like on the shelf on the garage. And I don't remember what happened to it. And it turned out years later, you know how you have like the bag you never use, like the duffel bag? I grabbed a bag because I needed a different bag to go to the gym. And I grabbed it and went, Tuk -tuk -tuk. I went, and this is, imagine losing a watch that you have an emotional connection to, and it's no one's fault except your own. And it's in your home. And like, like I was pulling up the mulch in front of the house, like, did it fall here? It was gone for almost two years, I think. And, and I had, he had since told me, he said, I bought another one just in case something happened to one of ours. And he was like, and I would have bet that you would have broken yours. 
And I was like, that's not funny. It's accurate, but it wasn't funny. But the fact that I found it, I was, I was over the moon. And needless to say, I make sure I know exactly where I put that thing down every time. I don't want anything to happen to that watch, even though I beat it up. I'm so happy to hear a lost and found story because a lot of times I hear these tragic recollections of watches that disappeared and never came back. Never it's great to back. find one that came back from it came the brink. Back. It came back. Yeah. I'm really glad I found that. Now, we love our American iron, but, you know, as children of the 80s and 90s, we grew up in the era of, you know, Japanese automaking at Zenith. Like, these were aspirational cars. They were as fast as anything from Europe. They were more reliable than oh, anything yeah. from America. Mm -hmm. That 90s period just I think it conditioned us to look at Japan and premium Japanese products differently. Mm -hmm. So you've got G-Shock, but you've also got Grand Seiko. Yes. I, I love that watch. I mean, I love them all. Um, but a lot of the people in the community know me for that one. Um, when I first started reading about Grand Seiko, and again, thanks to you and all the wonderful content you put out, because I watched the video for that watch n number of times. And I had always said, I'm not going to buy it unless I can try it on. And I was on a business trip to New York. And lucky enough, uh, again, the watches and the people. There's a gentleman at Grand Seiko, Joe Kirk, who is wonderful. Uh, he will answer every question. He is a class act, so knowledgeable and passionate about the brand. Him, and really everyone at that team is awesome. And he had done a pop-up at one of the stores in Watches of Switzerland in New York. And I was like, Oh, wow, you actually have this. Because uh, limited, but not super limited. And, and I could never find anyone who actually had it. Tried it on, and I was like, I knew. I, I was like, I had read enough about it. I knew everything about what it was. I knew. And the fact that, you know, just because the links are raised up in the middle and multiple materials, and it's got a spring drive, because I think that that's one of the coolest things that they've ever done. A GMT, a Chrono, I was like, I want this watch. And to have to do the phone call... Uh, to my other half at night um, to be like, look, we, we need to go. Um, that was fun. But I, I adore that watch, and, and I'm so glad to have it in the collection. I even have a chocolate leather brown strap that I can swap that onto. It looks pretty cool when I do that. Joe Kirk is the man for Grand Seiko. Yes. If, if you want to know the past, present, and future of Grand Seiko, that is a man who lives his passion. I mean, he is more immersed in it than anyone I know. Absolutely. Like right down to the Japanese language, this is a guy who is the gateway to that brand and one of the best in the business. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I love that watch. A really formidable piece. I am noting a bit of a sub-theme here with the exception of the offshore bracelets. Is that something you planned? I'm a bracelet guy and I actually put the bracelet on a few of them. So the Zenith is on the rubber a lot. The Pioneer, I ordered it on bracelet and it was about a, it was a little over a year before the bracelet came in. So that's on, that's on, uh, rubber a lot. And then the, the VC I have on rubber quite a bit, just had it on it earlier. I just happened to throw the bracelet on to bring it up here. But the, the only rubber strap up there is the AP right now. <laughs> I, I will say, I normally, th this model came out in 2020. It's the uh, Pioneer Center Second Swiss Mad Red, but it's almost always on a strap. Almost always. Almost always. And I, as you can probably tell, I'm a fan of like, hey, I have this, but it's like, slightly offbeat. Like, I'm a big fan of like, oh, you don't normally see that all the time. I, I just like something that's sometimes a little different. Everything is cool, but when I first saw Pioneer, I was like, boy, those dials, because dials, like, those dials are insane. And then I always thought Moser was interesting with just their playful take on things with the cheese. And then, you know, the, the Apple Watch that wasn't. But when I saw the red, I, I love red. And I was like, that's probably one of the best red dials out there. I was like, boy, I really wish I could get it on a bracelet. It was like, you can. It's like, oh, I got to have that. So I wear it on the rubber uh, in the summer, but finally got that bracelet, you know, a year after getting the watch. And it's pretty cool, especially with the like ratchet, the adjust, and it, it's substantial. It's, it's, I like that bracelet. It's pretty cool. W without a doubt. And I think there's another sub theme here, which is just durable watches. Even on the strap, You've got watches here that are designed to go the distance. There's not like a Patrimony or a Calatrava in here. Do Those you have right. any dress watches or do you aspire I, to? I, I currently don't have a dress watch. So if I was going to dress up right now, um, my Monaco, I have a leather that I can put that on. I could put the VC on leather. Um, there are some other watches uh, that kind of fit that, that mark. Um, I've been talking to the people from FP Journe, uh and I've tried on the CS there, the Chronomat Souverain. I wasn't, I originally didn't get it. 
when I saw some of the Jorn pieces. I was like, okay, you know, what's this about? And when I learned more about it, there's a big thing I like to talk about, uh, and I, I got inspired by this one chef that I, I watched a documentary on, and he was talking about how when things are hard and they don't look like it, when like all this, all the challenge and the sweat and the, the pain, and you don't see it, and that's the magic, he talks about deceptive simplicity. And when I learned more about, here's our approach in the CS of why the power reserve being over here by the crown, why that's cool. Here's that this flat, it will feel the same force like this. This is why with the two barrels. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And so I was, I was really drawn to that. And then hearing the passion from different collectors with that, I was like, I could see myself in that, a non-bracelet watch. Um, I've tried on some other, you know, again, leather bands, stuff like that. But th that's, that's on the radar for me right now. That's, that's one of the things I'm really thinking about getting. That's a cool kind of way to look at it, because I've always thought that a lot of the great auteur creators in any genre, whether it's Hitchcock in cinema, Brian Wilson in music with the Beach Boys, or F.P. Jordan in watches, you have a very distinctive product that's deceptively simple, but if you want to get into it, you could spend an entire college course deconstructing. And that, I, that was so my, my vibe. And like again, back to the people, meeting the team there to be so receptive warm, answering the questions. Let me show you why I'm passionate about what we do here, how we work with clients, how we talk with people. And, and again, to everybody in the industry, I'm, I'm, I'm always so impressed about how the folks in the industry have to juggle managing expectations from very important client here and, oh, my phone is blowing up here. And to keep all these people, you know, I don't want to say satiated. That's not the right word. But, you know, everyone is important. Everybody needs the next watch. And I'm not that demanding you must get the, that's that's just not my vibe um like when it happens it happens that's cool um but to see folks especially from Jorn deal with because it's very it's a very popular product right now and to see them interact with the community in a positive and productive way was always really cool to watch it was another pretty cool tie to it shout and out that, shout out to shout out to the team there without a doubt i mean they're one of the best in the business and it's great hearing it from you because you do a lot of business coaching and you're giving them top marks for managing expectations <laughs> absolutely and dealing with leaders i mean saying no is never fun you know you never want to say no but it's like how can you how can you make success clear how can you set people up for success how can you give people what they want and then maybe you know you might not get every you can have anything you want you just can't have everything that's one phrase that we like to use it's like and that's the idea of like where to start it's like you can have anything on the shelf where would you like to start you, you can have anything you want you just can't have everything and it's like okay i remember a client that we had a conversation about that once it was like okay that makes sense it was like where to start it's like imagine you could eat everything on this menu but this is where you're eating like this year what do you want it's like i want that or i want that bottle of wine what I find impressive is that you want a lot of stuff that's very diverse and you move up and down the price spectrum. You're talking about Jorn, and yet you have the <laughs> Tudor Black Bay GMT and you were in early. I was in super early. Um, that was, when I saw that, <laughs> it's funny what drew me to that because I walked in, and this is before like, I guess I didn't get it at the time. I walked into one of my local jewelers like, hey, I'd really like to buy a Batman. Like one of these black and blue watches. It's really cool. I'd like to buy that today. And they're like, well... And I was like, oh, really? And, and, and <laughs> it's astounding because I've talked with people about that where it's like, I do think that that's something that's missing where it's like the big promotion or we won the contract. And like, imagine a team of us sign a huge deal. Let's go celebrate and let's, I want to buy you all a sub, like as a team. Like, like Bruno Mars, I think, did that with the, the gold APs, like bought the whole band that. And like, I think Keanu Reeves has bought like the team, like watches and like, that's cool. But like, hey, I got the promotion. Let's go celebrate with a glass of champagne and, 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 and get the stuff. You can't do that now. And that's a bummer. I just heard a story when I was in Oklahoma City last week. A gentleman told me that a couple had been married and for their like 40th wedding anniversary, they wanted to come in and buy each other Rolexes. And nowadays it's like, well, imagine poor people driving two hours one way for a, for a moment and they didn't know. And so I'm sorry, this is a long, long winded no, waiting no, to get good. back to the tutor. It's but, but it's like, that's something that I really hope can come back at some point for that, like, that special, that, that, that moment. But back to the tutor, when I saw about how a turnable bezel, 24 hour hand, I can track three time zones. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I always thought the, 
old like GMT Master II from like the, the commercial of the guy skiing. I'm like, oh, that's kind of a cool watch. I was like, oh, I want to get one of those. I didn't know that they were making that. And then, then when that finally came out, I was like, oh, owned by Rolex. Okay, there's a good strong tie there. There's a vintage look. I like the, I like the bracelet. I was like, I got to find one of those and I couldn't. And one of my contacts in Vegas luckily had one and they had a client that was on the fence. And I was like, I'm not on the fence. Let's go. And my good friend, a very good friend, my friend William was with me. And he was like, I can't believe you're just buying a watch. I was like, I came in here knowing that if it was there, I wanted to buy it. So got in early and had, you know, some of the quirks with early models. Um, but no, I love it. I wear it a lot. It's, it's a, uh, some hardcore marks on this watch. Yeah. <laughs> it gets a, a daily Boom. driver, as we say. That's the best way to put it, go. I think. There we go. I, I like that. Yep. And, you know, this has definitely been driven enthusiastically. <laughs> So I, I'm assuming this is the most recent arrival. I think I've seen this one on Instagram, but this, this right now feels like the capstone to where your collection is now. It absolutely is. Um, I was never an offshore person. When I saw offshores the first, you know, years ago, I thought they were very tall because of the module. You know, you have to look down the tube down at the date. I was like, it's, and I'm a, I'm a sizable guy and I'm, and I have a pretty big personality, but like, as large as I am, I, I'm kind of, I try to chill. And those watches never felt like me. I was like, it just didn't, it just didn't fit. They're like, oh, but you're big and brown. I'm like, uh, like, I'm, I don't know. Just let me sit in the, in the corner of the party, and make sure everyone's having a good time rather than I don't need to be in the middle of all of it. I was like, let me just make sure everyone's having fun. When that came out, Watchbox came down and they had the, uh, the blue and gray one. And uh, I believe Nick, Nick brought it down. Nick and Hans came down. And I, we were checking things out, and I tried it on as a joke. Like, oh, sure, I'll put it on. And I put it on, and something just clicked. I was like, huh, this is really comfortable. And everybody, everybody in the room was like, that. That, 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 and like, like, and you know, you buy watch. I buy watches for myself. I don't, you know, I, I tell everyone, buy the car for you, buy the watch for you. And when I tried it on, I was like, huh, this is really something. And then I started reading. Wow, in-house. Okay, it's, I love the fact that it's cambered from 12 to 6. You know, it's a little bit more wearable. This? A little, yeah, it's like, this is cool. And to find a, um, to, to finally be able to try that on was really amazing. And so being able to go up again, back to the people, uh, wonderful team at AP. I, I have never experienced service like this world class absolutely delightful experience knew someone there i said love to come on in i want to try on some things they brought out the beast they brought out the 41 mil chrono which was perfect and they brought out that and we tried them all on and i was like i want that and like some people are like why didn't you buy the, the 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 royal oak it's like i'll get that later that's what i want rugged 100 meters, like ceramic, I could wear that. There's not a bracelet I'm worried about and, and fly back. And it's just, you don't see it. And to be able to have it all come together that quickly was astounding. And, and every interaction with that team, it's it's been impressive. And, and they called me, you see it's on the white. It came with a blue and a black. And they gave me the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They were like, yo, big man, there's going to be a red coming out and also a white. And I said, okay. I'm in for both. And when they got it, brought that down, that's car, my buddy's like, that's car show watch. Like, it's white, it pops. And I love that watch. I wear that so much. I wear everything a lot, but that gets a lot of wrist time. It feels like me. It's super comfortable. It's, it's, it's really something, and I'm so impressed with what they've done with it that I would recommend that. If you're on the fence about buying, buying the 43 mil, go try it on. It's, it's wonderful. It is a wonderful piece. Chris, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Keep rolling and wear them in good health.